Growing up in the mountains of North Georgia, camping and hiking were things my brother and me did so often it became second nature. Any time Ryan and I had a break from school, we'd head out straight for the woods. We packed our gear, let our parents know where we were going, and that was that. No questions asked. We decided to camp about midways through Jack's River Trail in Kohata Wilderness, and it's a trail we knew fairly well since we'd used it a few times before to practice long hikes. We arrived at the trailhead around lunchtime, parked the car, got out our gear, and headed into the woods. We passed a few hikers as we moved along and asked them how the trail looked, and the answer was always the same. Wet. Jack's River Trail probably crossed the river 50 times as it went along its 17-mile journey, and with the colder temperatures of late fall setting in, it was harder for the trail to stay dry. We moved deeper into the trail and started to look for a place to make camp. This is where Ryan and I made our first mistake. You see, me and Ryan have this rule. We don't camp near people if at all possible. Call us paranoid, but the last thing we want is for someone to drag us out of our tents and into the woods never to be seen again. So, we always camped a pretty decent ways off the trail, and in the area that wasn't popular with overnight camping. After roughly two and a half hours or so, we found what we thought was the perfect place to set up for the two nights that we'd be out. We came up to Horseshoe Bend and ventured about half a mile off the trail into a clearing and set up. We built a TP fire lay for that night. After setting up and unloading, we decided to walk back to the trail and go exploring around many of the swimming holes Jack's River had to offer. This was during Thanksgiving break, and I remember being surprised at how few people were on the trail. Maybe it was the weather or the fact that this was early in the week, but there didn't seem to be anyone hiking, much less staying the night. Around five o'clock, Ryan and I headed back to our camp to start our fire, make dinner, and settle in for the night. As soon as the sun began to set, the cold rushed in. We added more wood to the fire, sat close, and just enjoyed conversation. Ryan was two years behind me in school. I was a senior and he was a sophomore, but growing up, we had always been close. We always hung out in the same groups, played the same sports, had the same hobbies. Around 9pm, we're settling comfortably around the fire. I just text our mum to let her know we were safe and settling down. And I remember we were talking about dreading going to our grandparents' house for Thanksgiving, when things started getting strange. We were no strangers to sounds in the woods, and these woods were full of animals, from deer to black bears, and even the random wild boar. If you're in the woods enough, you learn to distinguish certain sounds, and what we were hearing, I can only chalk up to as odd. What Ryan and I heard was what sounded like someone sneaking around slowly, just out of eyesight. With an animal walking on four legs, you hear a tighter group of steps. But what we were hearing sounded like a human walking slowly, or trying to move without making much noise. We both pulled out our flashlights and shone them in the direction we thought the sounds were coming from. But that's what's so weird. Whenever we'd fix our lights on the spot, the sound would suddenly change, as if it was multiple people walking around us. That's when the whistling started. At first, I thought it was the wind, and I remember thinking maybe the wind is just throwing leaves around, and what we thought we were hearing was nothing but the wilderness around us. Ryan looked at me, and asked if I was hearing it too. I didn't answer, and was trying to focus hard on each individual sound. Two consecutive notes, with roughly a three to four second gap, and then two more consecutive notes, over and over again. 
Ryan kept asking me if I heard it, and I put my finger to my lips, trying to keep him from talking. The fear I felt was incredible. My jaw was tight, my fist clenched, knowing I wasn't ready for whatever was out there, if it was anything at all. The whistling continued for what felt like forever. That's when Ryan finally yelled out into the darkness. Hey! Quiet. The whistling stopped. The crunching of the wood stopped. Nothing. I was pissed. I looked at Ryan with a what the hell look, and he shrugged his shoulders. I had to do something, he said. I just shook my head. We sat there in silence for a few minutes, when the woods erupted with noise. Something or someone was running in a circle around our campsite. The whistling came back, two consecutive notes with the same three to four second gap, and then two more consecutive notes again. How could someone whistle this loudly without cracking, while running at the same time? I was done. I stood up, shining my flashlight in all directions, trying to catch a glimpse of whatever was screwing with us. Nothing. It felt close enough to touch, but we never saw a thing. That's when the movement stopped, but the whistling was still constant. It was so loud, inhumanly loud. I looked at Ryan and told him to call the police. Now, this is the part I'll never forget, the part I never like to talk about. While Ryan was on the phone with the dispatcher and telling them our location and what was going on, I stepped around the fire towards my tent. Inside my bag, I had a six-inch fixed blade that I always carried and thought I'd feel a bit more comfortable with it in my hand, more so than just with my flashlight at least. As I went to unzip my tent, trying to keep my eyes towards the woods, I heard some movement directly in front of me. I swept my light up in front of me, and for maybe two seconds, I saw it. Whatever this person, or thing, was, it was about five feet up in a tree. Everything about it was long. Its arms, legs, neck, fingers, everything. And it was fast. As soon as the light hit it, it launched backwards off of the tree. I heard it land, but it either jumped an impossible distance, or landed in a thicket, because I heard it but never saw it. I don't think I've ever yelled so loud. I ran back to where Ryan was and sat down. He kept asking me what I saw, but I couldn't answer. I just kept thinking about it. Maybe ten minutes later, we saw a couple of flashlight beams coming through the woods, and about three guys came into view, asking if everything was okay. I settled a bit, and started asking them if they had seen or heard anything. All they said was they heard a lot of movement, and then heard my scream, and that's when they headed in our direction. I tried to explain what happened without sounding crazy, but it didn't seem to work. One of the guys walked around a bit, came back, and said he didn't see anything. Ryan told them that we had called the police, and roughly 30 minutes later, a park ranger showed up. Ryan and I tried to explain everything to him, but he just chalked it up to some curious animal or some campers trying to mess with us. Either way, Ryan and I decided we weren't staying the night. We packed our stuff up and walked out of the woods with the ranger. He took our statement, and we got in our car and drove home. Ryan and I don't talk about what happened that night, but neither of us have been back to Jack's River Trail, and probably never will go back. I'd like to share an encounter I had back in 2005 or 2006. 
I was 10 or 11 years old at the time, and it happened on my grandparents' property, out in the country near Denmark, which is southeast of Green Bay. It's a lot of farmland out there, with patches of woods. My grandparents own a few acres of land, and on the far right corner of their yard, there's a thick patch of woods and swamp that goes on for a bit before hitting another farm field. I was standing on the back deck, shooting cans with my BB gun. It was a hot and muggy morning in July, and all morning outside, I just had a really eerie feeling which I couldn't shake. It was like I was being watched, but every time I looked around the yard, I never saw anything. I just kept going back to shooting cans, when I felt the feeling again. I started scanning the tree line of the woods this time, and that's when I saw it. It was standing next to a tree, and it was absolutely massive. When I got older, I went back to that tree to try and estimate its height, and I'd say it was around seven to seven and a half feet tall. The only way I can compare the body is to that of Arnold Schwarzenegger's. It's unreal how big its shoulders, arms, and chest were. It was covered in grey fur, really shaggy and thick on parts of its shoulders and down part of its body. I know when people describe dogmen, you hear a lot of, it looked like a timber wolf standing on two legs, or it had the face of a German shepherd, but this wasn't like that at all. The head and face looked like a wolf. It had pointed ears on the top of its head, and its eyes were yellow, and almost seemed to glow, even in the daylight. It was snarling its lips open, and it almost seemed to be smiling. The lurk and smile on this thing's face was pure evil. Sinister is the only way I can describe it. I don't recall if it had a tail or not and I feel like the legs look like that of a human's and not bent like a dog's. However, I was mostly looking at the head and body. After what could have only been 10 seconds, which felt like hours, without warning, it broke eye contact with me and took off sprinting to its right. It went through some really thick brush, emerging farther down the tree line, and took off into the woods. The thing is, no person could clear what it cleared in the time it did it. In seconds, it ran probably a good 50 to 60 yards, and it was all thick brush through there. Being absolutely terrified, I went back into the house and didn't go outside for the rest of the day. Funnily enough, my aunt came up to me later and said, I heard some strange things outside last night. I've been meaning to tell you, but I didn't want to freak you out. I didn't tell her what I saw, thinking that she'd think I was crazy or making it up, but I insisted that she tell me. She said she heard a loud growling and snarling walking around the house the previous night, unlike anything she's ever heard before. I still visit my grandma's quite often, and haven't seen anything since. I haven't heard of any other reports from the area, but I know there was a Bigfoot road crossing back in the 60s or 70s, just down the road from their house. Three nights ago, I went to hang out at a friend's house, maybe 20 minutes away. My husband was home with our six-year-old son, and put him to bed around 9 o'clock. While I was gone, my son woke up crying and threw up in his bed. My husband sprang into action and got him cleaned up and put him in our bed, taking my son's sheets off his bed and hauling them outside to spray them off. It was about 10.40pm at this time, and it all happened less than five minutes before I pulled up. Anyways, my husband goes around to the side of our house to grab the water hose, and starts to drag it around to the side of the house where he was laying our son's blanket. Oh, the joys of parenting. Now bear in mind, we live out in the country in an old farmhouse surrounded by woods. 
He drags the hose to the area, and as soon as he stops dragging it and it's quiet, he hears, Hey, Dad, come out of the woods about 75 to 100 feet away. My husband froze and ran into the house to make sure our son was still in bed. He was knocked out cold and happily snoozing. I pulled up about five minutes later and greeted him, and everything was fine until he tells me about what he heard. My husband is a pretty straightforward person. You know how sometimes you think you hear someone call your name and you're not sure? He said it wasn't like that. It was definitely, as clear as day, hey dad, exactly how our son greets him, and the exact same voice too. I was left a little perplexed by this. I don't know what to make of it. Is it a spirit? A creature? Is it nothing? We've had some weird stuff happen around the house before. Last year, around deer season, we had some strange lights in the woods. Orbs. They set off our trail cam. I may still have the pictures, but that's about it. Anyways, just wanted to share my story and see what you guys thought. Hey guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. I've been really busy recently, so uh, I'm gonna try and make up for the lack of videos by bringing you another one very soon, uh, in the next couple of days I hope. Just something to tide you guys over until I can start uh, getting back into the uh, rhythm of things, so to speak. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back with some more very, very soon. Until then, you all stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.